I once heard a story of a German pilot who crashed on a test flight in Hungary's mountains. It was a dreadful winter. The soldier's body was also severely frozen. Local shepherds rescued him for imminent death by transporting him to a warm location and wrapping him in a felt mat. Since then, felt has become the pilot's favorite material, and he often used it in his work. The renowned artist Saulia Bapanova refers to the story of a German pilot named Joseph Boys. According to some sources, his jet was shot down during an attack on Crimea in the winter of 1943. The local Tatars discovered a frozen body of a German soldier in the mountains and retrieved it using fat and felt. The event had a profound impact on Joseph, who devoted himself to art after the war, frequently using felt and fat in his sculptures, paintings and performances. For the artist, felt was a metaphor of life and warmth. What exactly is this material and when and under what circumstances did it appear? This is likely to have occurred during the Stone Age, when primitive tribes stitched clothing from animal skins and wool. This is supported by archaeological discoveries which revealed remains of garments made of wool or processed animal skins under thick eyes. People could make felt even back then, judging by the products made of felt. Since ancient times, people have mastered the art of felting. Scientists are unable to pinpoint a specific date for this day. On the other hand, the artifacts discovered in the Scythian tombs of the Pazirik Mount attest to the usage of felt long before our era, in the Iron Age. In addition, we are aware of ancient Kazakh customs that state that the deceased was buried in a white felt carpet. This material was available and the production techniques were passed down from generation to generation. <laughs> The findings of archaeological excursions in 1929, which discovered princely mounds, should be mentioned. Scientists have been interested in historical sites in Kazakh territory since the second half of the 18th century. According to an archaeological book released in the late 20th century, by Mikhail Grezhnov, felt entered the lives of nomadic tribes as early as the Bronze and Early Iron Ages. According to experts, the first samples of felt artifacts appeared during the Bronze Age. The research of the discovered exhibits proved that the ancient tribes that lived on the territory of Kazakhstan were skillful in the technologies of felting, quilting linen. For example, they lined wool on colorfully decorated sackcloth and fashioned felt mats. Previously, they poured over felt with boiling water without washing it first. Now I'm wondering why it wasn't washed. And I'm thinking the whole problem is in the composition. Kazakhs were well aware of the properties of wool, which contains lanolin, animal wax. Its antiseptic properties are well known in the modern world. The technology of felting is unique. The process can be divided into phases. First, the wool is washed and cleaned, then combed and laid in layers. Then it was pressed by rolling and pushing with feet while pouring hot water over it. The felt was stamped with elbow blows and palms flapping so not to displace the pattern. 
and distinct layer that makes up the incorrect side. These steps have, of course, been greatly made easier by modern technology. Felting is a collaborative process in which the entire community participates. Men boiled water in big cauldrons, daughters-in-law prepared meals, while women and grandmothers working on the project cheered everyone up with songs. In general, the entire process mimics modern manufacturing, with each master performing a signed task. The first spreads the wool on the chi, the second combs it, and the third decorates it. They are sheep of the Yedilbai breed. This animal's wool is extremely coarse and rough. It creates a sturdy, long-lasting felt mat that is nearly impossible to break. My grandfather, for example, used this felt mat to sharpen blades. Wool of various colors, brown and white, was typically blended in felt. Our grandparents have adapted so well to such hard work over the years that they can effortlessly and quickly cut complicated ornate patterns with scissors. The finished patterns were matched so that the color contrast was stunning and they were stitched together with the wrong side using burlap threads. There was a double layer. The end product was a beautiful, warm, useful, an eco-friendly carpet. A felt mat of this quality will endure at least 50-60 years. All of the craftswomen gathered in the same house before producing felt mats to thoroughly explain the whole process. Naturally, the duster hunt was set and tasks were assigned. Technologies were invented to help speed up the process. Women brought their children. These meetings were especially beneficial to the growing daughters. Children listened intently to the elders talk, ensuring the continuity of generations. Felt should be dense, as well as waterproof and resistant to snow, heat and cold. The primary raw material, sheepskin, was mined twice a year in the spring and autumn. Jabara was the name given to the wool sheared in the spring. Sheared wool is known as kuzim in the summer and has a different quality. As a child, I used to wonder why women would continuously pass their hands over chi. After spreading the wool over it, it turns out that this is how they test its uniform distribution. If the needed thickness was lacking someplace, they added wool. Before pouring boiling water, this process must be completed. After ensuring the wool was correctly distributed, the craftswomen began rolling up the felt while pouring hot water over it. Working with felt is pleasant. This is a natural product. It has boundless energy. A felt mat called alasha can be made from wool because cattle raising was the nomadic people's prime activity. Kazakhs created a wide variety of items from felt. Felting is good for your health, say specialists. The continuous process requiring enormous physical demands when women had to work sitting, standing, continuously bending down, tamping their feet and elbows had a beneficial effect on the health of the steppe beauties. Felt has numerous properties. After all, it has been through rain, snow, strong winds and scorching summers. Why, for example, does the yurt not get wet on a rainy day? What contributes to a dry home? The secret is in the density of the felt, which did not allow even a nail to be stuck into it. For generations, a well-made felt mat survived any natural disaster for generations.
Felt is a lightweight, breathable fabric. It circulates air well. As a result, it's beneficial for health. You don't sweat, you don't freeze, you don't get wet when you wear felt garments. For example, in rainy weather, we weave felt skull caps that do not get wet. It all relies on how well the felt is produced and how tightly and frequently you press it. Among my customers are those who purchase a felt stocking, Baipak, for their children. It's fascinating that a child who has worn a Baipak once refuses to wear other shoes. Ulbolsen Daulinova has been working in applied arts for over 30 years. At first, I helped a friend who made felt, she explains. Ulbolsen chose this job as a result of gradual immersion and knowledge of traditional culture. Of course, not everything was so simple at first. We established a tiny workshop. There was also no specific demand for our products. But we didn't want to quit halfway, so we kept working. First, we considered how to master the technology of felt production as well as how to make attractive and practical objects. There was no mention of profit. We were astounded by the expertise of our grandparents and great-grandmothers, what exquisite taste and high level of professionalism. How do they manage to harmoniously combine colors and create such a complicated and yet unique ornament? Felt is now made in a variety of methods by artisans. For example, they produce significantly thinner bags or covers than carpets. Take, for example, the advanced countries of the world. First and foremost, they value their country's culture, inspire interest in their customs. As a result, we need to revive our ancestors' priceless history, instilling a sense of patriotism. The material which has been utilized as a vital part of the yurt since ancient times is now used to make fashionable garments, bags, and unique jewelry. Natural materials in high demand among today's consumers, since they are lightweight, retain heat, and are not prone to deformation with proper maintenance. The Kazakhs, who were well aware of the peculiar properties of felt, wore a skull cap or kalpak in summer to prevent overheating from the sun's scorching rays, and a baipak in winter to protect themselves from harsh frosts. Between 2001 and 2002, there was an increase in interest in felt products. We had forgotten about this particular aspect of traditional art until then. I believe that the era of globalization caused us to reflect on our own identities. The fear of losing one's national identity sharpened the sense of patriotism. The collection of Kazakh designer Aya Bapani, daughter of a renowned artist Saulia Bapanova, left an unforgettable impression on me and instilled a sense of pride. Aya was the first person in Kazakhstan to start making garments from felt. Sheikh Shapans were more than just garments, they were works of art. Then I realized you could do anything with this material. Tourists from other countries have expressed an interest in felt products in recent years. As a result, Kazakh artisans began to produce ornamental and functional items. Furthermore, several varieties of felt mats, such as alasha or sarmak, are in high demand among hotels and restaurants that cater to international visitors.
Osu kizdi. In Europe, I learned how to blend felt and silk to make stylized objects. I utilize a similar technology in producing women's scarves of various colors and designs. There was an idea to make something for young people. What is a must-have item for young people? Of course, there are handbags and cosmetic bags. Содан кейін енді алсақ, күнделікті не жастар пайдаланады? Ол жаңағы сөмкешелер, сумкалар, косметичка дейміз өзіміздің. As a result, some very attractive, distinctive and fashionable accessories emerged. Our efforts were not in vain. Ормасын және өте бір заманауи тек қана түсін ғана пайдаланбай, өте мұнандай стилизация. Young people began to use as well as actively learn this ancient art. Қыздардан кейін ғана әрине жастар талпына бастады. According to art critic Gulnar Zhuvaniyazova, the Kazakhs made felt covers for dishes, cups and even a chest, in addition to numerous domestic objects, such as sarmak and alasha. Kesekap, the bowl case, was designed to keep them from breaking during the process of migration. Along with wooden and leather plates, Kazakhs also utilized porcelain dishes. Ayakkab was used for any other dishes. Larger bags were used to store clothes. Felt is particularly felted, quilted, and decorated with a design to form ayakkab. Each master is inventive in his own manner. There are additional chest covers known as sadaqab. They're used to ensure that food stored in chest maintains a constant temperature and does not deteriorate. Sandakhap was affixed to wooden chests. They also assisted in maintaining a steady temperature in the heat and cold. I believe that any type of applied art that uses felt, wood or ceramics is our roots. We must use this. This does not imply that we should create identical things that were created hundred years ago. Of course, each next generation will modify them to meet the needs of society. The most important thing is not to separate oneself from the roots. The Kazakhs, masters of the vast expanses of the Great Steppe, left a rich legacy for their descendants that, if preserved, will provide spiritual food for several generations. Today, this heritage highlights the distinctiveness of Kazakh culture and serves as a national brand. Russians from Kazakhstan frequently place orders. They say we're Kazakhs. We ask would you like to do it with or without a national ornament? And they say of course with an ornament. This in my opinion is a sign of the nation's identity. I recall how we launched our business. There were not many orders, but we didn't stop there. We nurtured this love for country culture and an interest in tradition. I learned about several technologies. We attempted to justify the client's trust. Our pure thoughts were communicated through our hands. Everything contributed to our development. <laughs> Once a Kazakh girl approached me, she lives in Germany. For a fee, she offered to teach her how to create felt. It indicates that it has developed a sense of national self-consciousness. Her interest in applied art was sparked when she saw the products of a Kyrgyz girl who founded a boutique selling felt products. Sirmak and felt mat are very popular in Germany, as it turns out. As you can see, such cases must be discussed. People all throughout the world value handmade items. 
жүректің бір сұлулығы беріліп тұрат бәрі. Felting is an everlasting art that has passed down to us from the depth of time, preserved in its original form, reflecting the philosophy of the people and their world view.